Welcome to WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte. I'm Corey Nockreiner. Today's story is about critical vulnerabilities in semantic antivirus. There were a number of very interesting security stories today, but the biggest by far, at least by media coverage, was information about a Google researcher finding some very serious vulnerabilities in semantic and their consumer brand Norton's antivirus products. Now I'm going to cover this story in two parts. First is just the practical facts. If you're a Norton or semantic user, what you need to know and what you should do. But then I'll share a little bit bit of uh, color commentary around this particular issue that I find interesting. Let's start with just the bare facts. A Google researcher named Tavis Ormandy, who's a very well-known researcher, disclosed seven very critical vulnerabilities in Symantec's antivirus and security products, and it includes things like their Symantec endpoint protection product for enterprises and their Norton antivirus products for their consumer customers. Now, Ormandy doesn't cover all of these seven vulnerabilities in detail, but he does mention two of them in a blog post, and really most of them come down to pretty significant memory corruption vulnerabilities. In many cases, they're specifically buffer overflows. And this is where a, a bad guy can somehow mess up the memory of your computer in a way that he can execute remote code. In these specific cases, these memory corruption vulnerabilities all have to do with different types of file parsing that antivirus or security products have to do. For instance, some files are compressed or packed in certain ways, so antivirus products have unpackers that have to decompress the files to check them for anything bad. Also, sometimes Word documents have evil macros and other things in them. So often antivirus programs have uh, components that can kind of parse Office documents as well. In either case, it seems Symantec uses some unupdated third-party components that suffer some very critical vulnerabilities. What it basically comes down to is if an attacker can get some sort of specially crafted file or document to one of your user's computers, he could leverage some of these very serious vulnerabilities to execute code on that user's computer. And by the way, antivirus software tends to run with really high privileges. Some of these components run in kernel mode in order to catch really bad stuff, but kernel mode means they have complete control of your system. Other processes either run as the system user, which is the top Windows user, or as root on Mac and OS X systems. So basically that means if a bad guy can just send something to one of your victims computers, they can actually gain full control of that particular computer. And by the way, your users do not have to interact with these documents. It's not like they get an email and they have to open a document in the email. This sort of security software is designed to actually scan or look at files as soon as they drop on a computer. So in most cases, bad guys can exploit these vulnerabilities without user interaction just by getting these types of files on a user's computer that runs one of these semantic products. So it really is a very serious vulnerability. Ormandy describes it as wormable, and by that he means you can actually self-propagate this throughout a network just by sending these files to any type of user or computer you can. So really big deal flaws. Now the good news, it seems that Ormandy's worked with Symantec. They released an advisory, and they actually already have updates and patches for the software affected by these. So really long story short, these are really big flaws. If you're a Symantec user, you definitely want to go out and get these updates as soon as possible. For the second part of this story, I just want to share some of my personal opinions or some commentary around this particular story. There's really two things I want to share. First, around the researcher himself. You might have heard the name Tavis Ormandy, especially if you watch my videos. I've talked about him before. This guy is a, a researcher or a bug hunter I really respect. He finds a lot of very big deal critical flaws and helps get them fixed. However, I have had a different opinion with Ormandy in the past. In the past, Ormandy has sometimes disclosed flaws, really big critical flaws in well-known software, without actually talking to the software vendor first. Basically, his defense of this was that he didn't believe the software vendor cared about security, so he was disclosing to the public kind of to, to force that software vendor to do something about it. Now, in this day and age, I actually think most software vendors are actually working very well with researchers. A good example of this might be Microsoft. You know, 12 to 10 years ago, they had a very bad reputation among security researchers in the security community. Basically, they were known for not really reacting to researchers telling them about vulnerabilities and not really fixing flaws quickly. They, of course, did an about face on this. They started the Trustworthy Computing Organization, and now they have a regular patch day, and they seem to work very, very well with researchers. So I don't think this idea 
of full disclosure, of disclosing things without giving the vendor time to patch is a good idea. And personally, I actually think it puts a lot of customers at risk. Whether or not you agree with software vendors, you want to keep their customers safe and you want to give them time to patch. That said, the only reason I'm bringing this up is I actually want to give kudos to Ormandy in this case, because obviously he's worked with Symantec and he didn't actually disclose these vulnerabilities until Symantec was also able to disclose their patches for them. So I think this is really a great case of Ormandy doing what I think is responsible disclosure. The next thing I want to talk about is a lot of the headlines are being very, very negative on Symantec, pointing that they have these horrible critical flaws. And it really brings up the conversation about security companies having flaws. You should never expect any software vendor to be perfect, even a security software vendor. Even if a software vendor uh, has a really good software development life cycle that includes secure coding, even if their engineers are trained on secure coding and they have internal auditing mechanisms to look for vulnerabilities, humans make mistakes. So to think a security company will never have a vulnerability in their product is, is just kind of a pipe dream. It will happen. That said, security companies should be judged at a slightly higher standard, and Ormandy himself points out some negative opinions of this particular issue. Some of the components he found that were vulnerable are actually third-party components that haven't been updated for seven years, and that really is kind of a big deal. So I really don't have a practical takeaway here, but really my point is you should shouldn't think a security company will never have vulnerabilities. It's not a matter of if, but when. Every company can have vulnerabilities in their software or their products. But the way you should judge security companies is how they handle those vulnerabilities. Do they handle them transparently? Do they let their users know? Do they work with researchers? This is really the best judgment of how good a security company is. Anyways, that's the story. Again, if you're a Semantic or Norton user of one of the affected products, be sure to go patch. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.